guys, Ash Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you all here with me today. Sending some love and some positive vibes your way today, especially if you need it out there. Oh, it's that time of year, guys. We are going to do the unthinkable, the unfathomable today and rank off the top 25 champions inside the entire game uh, from 25 all the way to numero uno today. It's going to be a fun video. This is getting more and more challenging every year that we do it here because now there's, there's something called mythical champions. You may have heard of them, and they've really power crept. Uh, but not to say there's not a lot of really good legendaries and, and epics and, and so on in the game right now, but the mythicals, there's a lot of them on this list. There, there is uh, still more legendaries, but uh, let me know in the comments below if I snub your favorite champion. Rest assured, I am going to offend some of you guys out there because it's hard. There's so many good champions that are not on this list. Uh, there's no epics and no rares on this year's list for the first time ever that we've done this. Uh, my favorite epic would be Seer, and she's kind of she's right there on the cusp of 25. My favorite epic, uh, my favorite rare, excuse me, in the game, my number one would still be after all these years cold heart even though i will say that bellower with that new blessing is actually sneaking up on her a little bit Anyway, I digress. Let's jump into it here. Here's the top 25 champions in Raid Shadow Legends, starting with a Banner Lord, a mythical champion. It's Androck the Glorious. We're not going to go over all these mythicals, the entirety of their kit. We'd be here all day, and you know I tend to ramble as is. He's a nice, tanky beast of a champion, 16, 19 base defense. He's fast, like all mythicals, at 110 speed. He's got increased duration of buffs. He's got increased resistance, strength, and, and continuous heal. What? What a great champion, but this Knights of the Wild passive is, is bonkers. Increases resistance for 10 for each buff on each ally. That's a lot, right? Especially if you stack up those buffs. And critical hits inflicted by all allies fill the turn meter of all allies by 5%. Occurs once per skill, so you've got that motor going all the time as well. He also has the decreased defense. He's got the decreased resistance, the weaken, the enfeeble. Uh, really good, really unique. Uh, only one of those champion in the game the time of this recording has that ability also a buff removal from enemies pure damage and block buffs man this guy is an incredible an insane support champion one of the best in the game specifically for hydra but basically anywhere in the game this guy is really really good defense in all battles aura coming in at number 24 how the money have fallen i want to say like two years ago she was number two on the list now she's number 24 and it's a crazia <laughs> Patrick, what? I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Crazia? She's got the enemy max HP ability on every single hit. She's fairly easy to build. I mean, she has decreased the damage taken from AoE attacks on her passive to help keep her alive. Uh, she's just a damage machine for PvE content. Very difficult, by the way. Uh, I'm treating this video, I should have said this at the top. If Plarum came to me one day and said, Ash, which champions do you want? This is my snake my snake draft order, or whatever. My draft order for you fantasy players out there. This is going to be my fantasy team. My Plarium Raid Shadow Legends fantasy team. <sighs> so yeah, Acrisia still does a ton of damage. She's still on the list. She's clinging on at number 24. At number 23, again, one of my previous top champions in the game. It's Lydia the Death Siren at number 23. Lydia is still really, really good. Avoid affinity, decrease defense, weaken three turn, cooldown with increased speed, and strengthen. Whew. It's a mouthful, but it brings so much to the table. The Siren's Whale ability is still one of the best out there in the game in terms of doing so much on one AoE three-turn cooldown. She also obviously has the Deny Revival. She's quite a unique champion. She's the you know reward champion for Faction Wars, and I still think she's very, very deserving, and you should be thrilled when you complete Faction Wars to get your hands on Lydia the Death Siren. She's still a top 25 champion, in my opinion. Number 22 on the list is our Buddy, the Monkey King, Sun Wu, Sun Wu Kong. Some of you guys probably have him higher. Some of you guys probably have him off the list. I put him at number 22, which is saying a lot because all of these champions are insane. This guy is still an absolute stud in the arena. You can build him super fast for control. He can strip buffs. He can place a sleep, and this dude can nuke he can nuke he can hit very very hard and of course he comes back every three freaking turns with a full turn meter uh he's still still really 
really good in PvP and PvE. And in PvP, you look at the top champions right now, a lot of them are Force Affinity. I don't want to say any names because I don't want to, you know, uh, give you guys, I don't want to foreshadow too much in the video. Uh, but he, he actually does a good job at countering some of the meta as well. He has speed and arena battles on the aura, but you can use him in PvE uh, content as well everywhere. Tons of damage, buff strips, block buffs, great control, always comes back to life. There's some sick combos you can pull off with him. I have, by the way, check out the bomb video that I did with him and Valkanen. I think it's called the Instant Kill Team. Watch that video after this one in case you missed it. It's really nasty. It's insane. But it's not just that. It's like a champion like Hefrak you can pair him with, right? And he dies. Hefrak autos into the AoE attack. And then he comes right back alive again. You can just keep doing it over and over again. Uh, I really love Sun Wukong a lot. All right. Next up is going to be a mythical. And it's not It's not that mythical. Oops. <laughs> go go up. Uh, I thought I clicked on orcs. It's Geralt. Geralt Blood Maul is insane she's very very good again i'm probably gonna say this about every champion but she could have easily made it way higher on the list very difficult here her base form is really really underrated good control in support right she's got to provoke she's got unkillable for three turns on herself heck you could provoke all enemies and still have plenty of turns to make it to the the second form and nuke as well while that provoke's still out there if you want to she has ally protect she has block buffs she has a shield on everybody as well when attacked decreases the duration of all buffs on the attacker by one turn occurs once per hit also heals all allies by 50 percent of the damage taken this is really underrated everybody knows about or talks about her alternate form but it's a really really sick uh combo of skills here on the base as well she has increased cooldown of random skills on the target by two turns and removes shields even on the a1 foe crusher but her secondary form is just bonkers in terms of damage right whenever an allies are passive whenever an ally uh, attacks she has a 25% chance to join the attack. Damage increases as her HP decreases. When she's joining the attack, it's an AoE attack. It's a hard-hitting AoE, uh, AoE attack that has an additional 20% chance of repeating the attack. And that stacks after every attack. So she can go, if you get lucky, she can go A1, 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 A1. And this is all out of turn, you know, if she joins in on Crimson Haze. And then the Calamitous Maul, her A2, hits extremely hard as well. It's defense uh really good in pvp exceptionally good in hydra anywhere pve for damage uh she's gonna be uh insane congratulations if you ever get your hands on her next up guys is going to be this guy this guy is so good marius the gallant the horse comes in at number 20 man i i I wanted to put him higher, and, and arguably he belongs higher. He's really freaking good everywhere in the game. He has an AoE Enfeeble on his A1. He's the other uh, champion we're talking about who has Enfeeble, and we talked about Androk. He has a triple hitter based on defense, enemy max HP. Each hit de decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. This is so good basically everywhere, especially the arena. He's going to increase accuracy, increase defense on all allies for three turns, and then a stun on the enemy with the highest turn meter and then grants an extra turn dude this kit is busted it is busted and then this annoying passive <laughs> this champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects and decreased speed debuffs whenever an enemy changes forms or attempts to decrease this champion's turn meter counterattacks using this champion's default skill changes form is any mythical changes form metamorphs he's gonna counterattack with the aoe with the enfeeble uh anytime a turn meter depletion a counterattacks with the aoe enfeeble very strong defense and all battles by 35 percent Ooh, he is really really good coming in at number 19 on the list is going to be white queen and cora uh so criminally underrated uh i don't have king on the list by the way i want if it was arena ranking he would be top 10 but i do think that you know well i'm not making excuses here he's insane he's, he's really good everywhere but i can only have fit 25 champions on the list white queen did make the list though because she is so dynamic she is so good even without the king on the team attacks one enemy decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skills by two turns at a 50 percent chance right everything gets better if white king is on the same team if the cooldown on the skill is fully reset heals them as well 
We have a cleanse. We have a shield on the A2 on a three turn cooldown. If the, well, the king's on the same team, we get a strengthen. Then we get a turn meter fill by 10%. We have a great revival on a three turn cooldown when revived. Revives a dead ally 50% HP, a whopping 75% turn meter, and resets the cooldown of the revived ally's skills. The second champion to be added with this ability next to God Seeker and Neri. You gotta love this revive on a three turn cooldown. Super powerful. After the revival, decrease the turn meter of all enemies by 10%. Why not? 20% if White King's on the same, uh, same team. 100% turn meter if White King's on the same team. And then, whenever an enemy tries to place CC debuffs on an ally with the highest crit damage, transfers those debuffs to this champion instead, so your nuker can't be CC'd. Fills a turn meter of this champion by 50% if this champion misses their turn due to one of these debuffs. Uh, at the start of this champion's turn, remove CC debuffs if King's on the same team. I mean, that is a busted passive with a speed aura. She is really exceptionally good i am a big fan can you tell you my friend have a death wish all right moving along here we have uh a a not a lizard man but rather an ogren tribe so uh i'm gonna talk about snubs as i go along in this how did i get to dark elves uh Krisk was right outside the list, guys. Want to give him some love here. Want to give him a little bit of love. I love you, Krisk. But I actually am a Grazer guy. Uh, not that you have to be one or the other, but they are very similar. And Grazer Iron Gut, I I'm going to go with Grazer. He has the enemy max HP ability. He can dish out an insane amount of damage. So can Krisk, to be fair. Uh, but insane amount of damage. In Hydra, he is amazing. He's increasing buff duration. He's got heals. He's got heals on the passive as well. He's got unkillable. He's got a provoke. He's got increased resistance. He's got increased defense on all allies all on a three turn cooldown he has an aoe shield on the a1 as well as a defense in all battles aura by 33 uh, percent i love him because of the enemy max hp but he's doing so much else on top of this right grazer iron gut he's uh he's a really good champion coming in at number 17 on the list guys is going to be Cardio. Cardio, man, again, another top 10, maybe top 5 champion previously. Fell down a little bit. That doesn't mean he's not still busted good. He really is. He has an A1 that has a chance of true fearing certain uh, factions. He's healing all allies off of his A1. He's the Angel Song ability is still exceptionally good. You get a cleanse. You get a protected revive on death as well. You have a block debuffs for two turns all in a three turn cooldown and then he brings in the ally attack with the increased crit damage, the increased crit rate. All allies are joining. Not one, not two, not three, not four. All allies. And then he has speed in all battles by 19% as well. Void affinity, so you don't have to worry about affinity matchups. Just exceptionally good and very versatile. You can really use uh, cardio pretty much everywhere in the game. You love to see that from a champion. Coming in at number 16 on the list is going to be Alaz the Sunbearer. It's weird. I, he was actually the second mythical I pulled, the third mythical I pulled on my account. And, uh, Man, that's such a dirty, disgusting, cracking thing to say. He was like the third mythical uh, back in the day. And I didn't use him a lot at first, and shame on me. Now I use him in the arena, I use him in Hydra. I think he's incredible, incredible. There's a lot to talk about this guy, but I'm going to be quick, right? On his base form, he has a, a Rolling Thunder, hits very, very hard, okay? In the arena, oftentimes, unless I'm going against a lockout, I don't even need to switch forms to his uh, to his alternate, right? So a lot of damage here off of the base. On the base, he's defense base. On the alternate, he's HP base. Kind of awkward there. Anyway, he's got to increase defense on all allies before the attack, so he's a defense base champion. Ergo, more damage. An extra hit, they have less than 50% HP after the second, uh, after the first hit, excuse me. Searing Glare, though. So strong basically everywhere. Hydra and Arena and everywhere. It's a counterattack on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Whew. The fourth counterattack champion to be added to the game after five years almost of only Martyr and Valkyrie and Skullcrusher, right? Uh, a provoke on an enemy for two turns can't be resisted if the target has less than 50% HP. Counterattack on all allies for two turns. And while we're at it, let's just throw a block damage up there too. Oh, it's a nasty ability. Increases champion's defense by 5% every time they counterattack up to 100%, okay? On his base form really quickly here, he has an AoE HP burn. 
can't be resisted if they're under stone skin. He instantly activates HP burn. Also, while we're at it, let's throw in a true fear on all enemies for one turn. He's got a fully restore destroy HP, heals all allies by 30% of his max HP. He's got to strengthen, he's got to increase resistance. And then he has increased his champion's HP for every six, for every one defense they have, which does mitigate some of that awkwardness that I referred to earlier. Increases champion's chance of enemy skills not activating under fear or true fear by 20 20% bringing it up to 70% when they're under an HP burn debuff. Whew. Defense in all battles by 35%. Yeah, Alaz is really freaking good. He's really good. All right, coming in at number 15 is going to be Grand Oak. Padrig. Padrig, Padrig, Patrick. It's Grando. Oh, a little Christmas tree, kind of, sort of. That's, that's not me. That's not Next guy will be a Christmas tree. Anyway, Grand Oak, man, he is so good. I I'm saying that about everybody. You know, I'll just say it one more time. Everybody from here on out in the entire video is so freaking good, okay? Now I can stop repeating it every champion. He's got a speed in dungeons by 25%, very nice speed, or there. Attacks one enemy, he has a 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally's skills by two turns. Again, these, these uh, decreased skills by two turns, really strong on an A1 ability, but... I mean, his A2 and his A3 are both busted, but so is his passive. He's got an ally attack here with a fully restore uh, enemy max HP or ally max HP and a continuous heal. Very nice ally attack. Very uh, unique, you know, with the ally attack. All allies will join in. He has a three-turn cooldown with a, a fill the turn meter of all allies by 20%. Removes all debuffs, a full cleanse, and the big version, obviously, of increased speed. What a great ability, man. He's doing so much. But this magic is awesome on the passive, guys. At the start of his turn, he's going to place a buff on every ally, depending on what they need, what type of champion they are. So your nukers get increased attack. Your defense get increased defense. Ergo, more damage, more survivability. Your support get increased accuracy to land their debuffs. And then your HP get a nice shield based on 30% of their HP. They, they probably have a lot. They're HP based. Man... What a nasty ability this is. He's really, really good. Coming in at number 14 on the list is the Christmas tree. It is Feral the Barkhorn. Yo, what up, man? What up, Feral? I love his aesthetic, man. He looks like the Grinch, though, stuck in a Christmas tree. Like, they had to put me in this pathetic outfit. It's like a totally important designer. And I will totally shoot you in the head. <laughs> he looks very, like, very curmudgeon y about it. Anyway. Defense-based champion. Uh, he's got a decreased speed on the A1, ignoring resistance potentially if they're a boss. An AoE decreased accuracy and a block buffs. Really solid debuffs to have. Decreased accuracy uh, is going to obviously, you know, help you block everything. And the block buffs is, is good for obvious reasons. And then we have increased resistance and a perfect veil. Notably, perfect veil two turns, increased resistance three turns on a four turn cooldown. Very, very nice ability there. Now you're going to be resisting everything. You're not going to be able to be targeted. You're going to have AoE damage mitigation. Perfect veil, very good. Very nice. Spirit of the North, passive. This is where all the magic happens on Feral. Because a lot of people, myself included it as well at first, you kind of look at his active abilities and you gloss over the passive or you just don't give it the right amount of attention, how disgustingly awesome it is. Uh, it's, it's, I don't have him. I really, really want this dude. If an ally is under two or more buffs, increase the resistance by 50. Okay, cool. Three or more buffs, accuracy by 50. Really nice, right? But four or more buffs, which is not a very high threshold to meet, especially in Hydra, well, anywhere in this game. Buffs are, are plentiful. Increase their damage dealt by 20%. 20% damage boost, especially in longer battles like Hydra, is... I mean, it's 20% more damage across the board. That's a lot. It's a lot on top of everything else that he's bringing to the table. Very, very good champion. Number 13 on the list is going to be a Knight's Revenant champion. And it's not... Why am I in Undead Hordes? <laughs> a Knight's Revenant champion. And it is Mr. Theodore. Where are, they're right in front of my face. Theodore the Savant. 
the king of speed runs. Uh, I couldn't include all the good burn and burn activators out there. I love Artac. He was almost on the list. Sulfurian probably should have been on the list. Uh, but Theodore is really just top of the class. He remains to be top of the class. He's an AoE decreased speed on the A1. I love that ability. 50% uh, land rate if I want it. Yeah, 50% land rate there. Very nice. He's defense base. He's easy to keep alive. He's got two poisons and poison sensitivity on all enemies. And then an increased speed while he's at it on, on all allies. He's got the increased duration of poisons and burns, which is really nice, before he instantly activates not just poisons, but also all burns too. Plays a weaken if they're not under any of those debuffs. And then he has a increased resistance dynamic on his passive with accuracy in all battles on the aura. He's just the quintessential poison or burn combustor. He can fit on so many different teams. He's tanky. He brings increased speed. He's a really, really nice champion who will really change uh, a lot about your account, what you can do in dungeons in terms of time in, in consistency rates. All right, number 12, guys, is going to be the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that everybody's annoyed about. It's Armand's the Magnificent. You might think this is kind of low on Armand's. Uh, from here on out, I mean, it's it's all a, it's all an opinion game here. Armand's is probably the best arena champion in the game. Could certainly make that argument that he's top three arena in the game, if not the best. Uh, outside of the arena, though, I think he's some of the, the the champions that are above him on my list are a little bit better so i wanted to make this a pretty balanced list uh either way 12 is very good he has the speed in, in arena battles he's got the the increase in the cooldown of a random active skill ridiculous he's got champions turn meter fill on the a1 he's got the greatest hits you guys know it i don't even need to read it to you it's the AoE stun and the turn meter steal. He basically takes another turn. He turns you into a sheep. He removes all buffs. Uh, cannot be blocked on the sheep. It's so annoying. Oh, man. Fills his champion's turn meter by 5% for each buff removed while we're at it. Oh, he's so annoying. Whenever a sheep debuff is removed or expires on an enemy, it increases the cooldown of a random skill to max. Fills a champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. Oh, God, Armands, you really are the most disruptive champion in the game. And I mean that as a uh, as a compliment, Armand. And an insult. Yeah, and I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Yes, I do feel like you are jealous. Honestly, guys, Armands, what do I have to say? Uh, probably the most requested nerf that I get here in the comments is to Armands the Magnificent. Although I will say, as it always does, the meta is adjusting a little bit, you know? Uh, you see it every day a little bit, you know? Just a little bit, though. <laughs> he still has a 70% or something like that ban rate in Live Arena, so what does that tell you? Anyway, coming in at number 11 on the list is another kind of Mighty Have Fallen story in Duchess. Now, listen, it's still Duchess. She's still top three, four... Three, reviver in the game, in my opinion. And she's still amazing, right? She's coming in at number 11. But she used to be a top three on some of my subsequent, you know, uh, ranking videos. She's still just so good. Some people in the comments have been saying that Duchess is like yesterday's news because of somebody else that we'll talk about. But that somebody else that we'll talk about you know, not like 0.01% of the player base have him, A, and B, Duchess is still busted and amazing despite someone else being very good, right? Anyway, she's got the mini shield in the A1. This, this ability, Shroud of Souls, so good, so good. Increase attack, block debuffs, and a perfect veil. Perfect Veil is so hard to find in this game. Perfect Veil is still, an AoE Perfect Veil in this game, I want to say there's... I don't know, six champions? Six or something like that? Totora, there's Duchess, there's, you know, uh, uh, Rector Droth, epic right there for you. There's uh, Truoth, there's not that many. There's not that many, it's very hard to find. And she's got it with an increased attack and block debuff. She's got a great revival, 70% uh, HP with a veil and the heals, and then the ethereal ways mitigating damage with the speed aura. What more do you want from a reviver in this game? She's very, very good. Uh, coming in at number 10. Didn't I say they're, I'm not gonna say that they're all very, very good anymore. Ash, number 10. We're getting into the top 10 here, guys. Can I, okay, there we go. Number 10 is gonna be Yameko. Uh, Yumeko is a lockout champion, but she's more than that. She can be a Kaimar, she can be a Warlord. She got Dance of Time. Decrease the cooldown of ally skills by three turns and increase the cooldown of enemy skills by three turns. Uh, so good. 
in so many different areas of the game. I mean, heck, you can use her Destiny's Mirror, right? You can place the hex and then basically reflect or deflect, I guess a better word, uh, debuffs, right? Really good against Bommel, really good against uh, the Dragon Hard, right? Just all the poisons go right back to him. This A2 is just really, really exceptional. And then she's so hard to deal with because she plays a perfect veil on herself for two turns at the start of each round, right? And then she's immune to all debuffs when she's under that veil or perfect veil. She's hard to get at and mitigate because of that passive. And then the Dance of Time and the Destiny's uh, Mirror are two really, really exceptional and sought after abilities in the game in so many different areas. Coming in at number nine on our list, guys, is going to be none other than, you might've heard of him, Taurus the Fierce. Who doesn't know? So Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. He's still, he's still top 10 in my book, you know? Uh, I didn't include White King, and I included Taurus this high. Why? Because Taurus is a beast in, in arena, in PvP, just like White King is. But I feel like Taurus is so good in PvE too. Uh, just Hydra, you want damage? He's got your damage. You want survivability? He's got plenty of survivability. You happen to have his companion champion, well, Stand aside because you've got one of the best combos in all of Raid Shadow Legends. Constant Pressure deals a lot of damage. He's got a two-turn stun on a three-turn cooldown. Counter-attack if Marich is on the same team. He's got a decreased attack on the A1. He's got each critical hit feels a turn meter of allies on his A1. Half the stuff you just kind of even forget about, right? He's just doing so much more than you would you might think. You just think damage and tanky right and he is that too when attack decreases the enemy's attack by 10 percent up to 50 percent 25 against bosses that's super strong so much damage mitigation fear on all enemies from certain factions can't be resisted at the beginning of each uh turn or round excuse me and in all incoming damage bump skills is reduced in half i mean god not only is he so busted but he's so tough to get rid of too, right? Coming in at number eight is gonna be his wife, Marichka the Unbreakable. I put her above Taurus because, man, she just, uh, I guess I err on the side of support, right? And she has a lot of it. She got speed in all battles. She got the the basically the, the, the revive on her death on everybody else. And then you just revive her and you just keep going and going and going. Uh, really good. Any area that you're struggling with, like, you know, Ice Golem Hard or something like that, he wipes you out, everybody's back alive. And then you just revive her again with another reviver on the team, right? You go against anybody, uh, you go against a Nishak in the, in, in the arena, you go against a Mithrala in the arena, you go against anybody with burn, there's a million of them in the arena, Gizmak. Just draft Marichka or play Marichka. You're going to have a block damage on all allies. We haven't even talked about her active skills. One of the best heals in the game with a protected strengthen and a shield. We've got a, uh, a full cleanse here with a turn meter fill, a potential of an extra turn if five or more debuffs are cleansed. Man, she's... Uh, <laughs> she's... She's something. She's something. Let's just say that. Coming in at number seven on the list, guys. Number seven on the list. This is where things get really crazy. All right? Number seven on the list is going to be Archer Queen. Where are you? There we go. Archer Queen. Some might say I'm crazy for having her this high, or some might agree with me. Some say I am she is, she's built different in my opinion. She really is. And I think seven is a worthy spot. She's defense-based. She's very tanky. She does so much. She's going to increase accuracy on her A1, which is nice. She's got an AoE stun. Or if it's a boss, a decreased speed. Also, turn meter reduction if they're stunned, right? And then fills the turn meter of all allies by 10% if the decreased speed is placed on this skill instead. So basically against Hydra, for example, you can't stun them, but you can get a turn meter fill and a decreased speed. But this A3 ability, oh! One of the best, just one of the best Hydra abilities in the, the best Hydra ability in the game. It's gotta be, right? An AoE attack with a hex and a provoke for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Oof. Oh, she's so good. Heals all allies by 10% of their max HP when attacking enemies under a hex. So now she's healing everybody too. Increases champion's defense by 5% each time this champion receives a fa uh, excuse me, a hit from an enemy under hex. Stacks up to 30%, so you can easily get a 30% extra defense. Again, she's a defense-based damage dealer, controller, 
uh, just really, really exceptional, not just in Hydra, even though she's amazing there, but wave content anywhere in the game. She's one of the best. Again, she's super easy to keep alive. She's so good at control. Uh, I really, really love Archer Queen. Clearly, coming in at number six on the list, guys, is going to be none other than Lazarius. Lazarius, uh, number six felt like a good spot for Lazarius. He's really good. I'm not gonna read his entire kit because again, we're already almost a half an hour into the video. He does have speed in all battles. Let's talk about his two forms, right? His second form, let's start with the alternate. His alternate form is a nuking, right? But okay, so a, a single target nuke, uh, really good stealing term meter that can't be resisted before attacking and then an aoe nuke as well hits pretty hard he's not the strongest nuker in the game in terms of the, how hard he hits but he's very effective he's also starting each uh when he at the start of the shame his turn he's placing an increased attack and increased crit damage on himself but this active effect is where things get absolutely bonkers with him increase the cooldown of all enemy skills by two turns whenever he kills an enemy so basically you can target, single target somebody if you need to, right? Or you can just AoE. It's going to be strong enough to easily nuke down, you know, the squishy champions, like the Sun Wukongs that you're going against, right? doesn't matter if he's going to come back because you're going to be reducing the cooldown of all enemy skills by two turns, right? So you get control built into his nuke. And on the support side... You have a turn meter fill, a turn meter reduction, you know, kind of little uh, Shuzen, a little Lissandra type action going on here with the increased attack and the strengthen. It's all on a three turn cooldown. And then you have a block debuffs on all allies for two turns. You decrease the duration of all buffs on all enemies by two turns, which is notably polymorph proof. And then a block buffs on enemies for two turns. But the magic about his base form is again in the passive. At the start of the champion's turn, plays a perfect veil and an increased accuracy on him for two turns. Also, this champion receives 3% less damage for every 750 attack they have. Stacks up to 30%. But this ability, at the end of his turn, revives a random ally with 50% HP and 50% turn meter with a perfect veil on said ally for two turns. I mean, that is nasty. So basically what you can do is you can build him like stone skin, one turn stone skin, two turn if you think you might stay in the base form for a little bit. You pair him with another damage dealer on your team, right? You draft, let's say, I don't know, a harem or something with him or whatever. Uh, you can rely on the other nuker and you can just support your team, you know, control the enemy a little bit, get rid of their buffs, and then just take a turn in case somebody dies, he can be a reviver vis-a-vis -vis the reality shift passive. He's really exceptional. All right. Number five on the list is going to be White King, Queen, Night Queen, Crixia. With all apologies to White Queen. The Night Queen. Night Queen is unbelievable. You guys know how much I love this champion. She's got the lockout, removes all buffs, and increases the cooldown of all enemy skills by three turns. She also has some turn meter decrease along with block buffs and decreased resistance. I don't use this ability that often because in Hydra, I'm rocking her alternate form usually all the time. And in the arena, I'm too scared of Polymorph to use the Doom Lantern ability. I don't even use it. Uh, but on the other side, or the alternate form, the other side? Okay, sure. Uh, we have a full cleanse and reduce the cooldown of all ally skills by three turns, right? So she's kind of got the Dance of Time ability on Yumeko, but it's split in both of, uh, uh, between both of her forms, right? We also have this great Reign of da Damnation ability. It's an AoE with block debuffs, and it increased resistance on all allies, and then a turn meter fill on all allies by 20%, right? So oftentimes, I will start by locking out the enemy team, right? And then I'll switch forms on the next move, and usually if I build her fast enough, I don't necessarily need, unless I need the cleanse, I don't need to decrease the cooldown of all my skills yet, right? So I'll just go in here for the turn meter fill in the block debuffs and the increased resistance. Uh, she also is immune to sleep, right? Increase her champion speed by one for every 10 resistance they have. That's awesome. And then she's immune to stun, increase her accuracy by one for every two resistance she has on this form. Everything you need exactly when you need it. She's the best control, cleanse, everything all into one. Coming in at number four on the list is going to be the mighty 
Siffy, the Lost Bride. With this A1, whether you're talking about Sand Devil, whether you're talking about Arena Control, uh, doesn't matter. It's one of the best control abilities in the game because it's an irresistible sleep on that A1. Then she got the A2. She's doing so much in this ability. You guys already know the block debuffs, the increased defense, the increased speed, and the turn meter fill by 10%. She's got a single target revive with a full turn meter. She's fast, 114 base speed. She's tanky. She's got a passive heal on everybody on the team. She has a 50% chance to remove fear and freeze, or freeze and fear, from each ally at the start of their turn, removes everything from Rodos. She's still the, the resist in all battles. She's still just the quintessential tanky support reviver in the game. And she's still probably one of the most picked champions in PvP and one of the most used support champions. A variety of areas you can really use her everywhere in pve content comes in at number four coming in at number three on the list guys now we're getting to the top three you might think i'm crazy but i feel pretty strongly that number three is lady makage that's right lady makage every week that goes by every month that goes by every day that goes by I fall more and more in love with this champion. And it's so cool that she is the permanent fusion for mythicals inside the game. It's a beautiful choice because I have her ranked number two out of all mythicals in the game. Now, to be fair, there's so many mythicals at this point in the game. There's probably like getting close to 20. And even to some off the list, like Arbias, for example, are very, very good. And, you know, what you may love about one champion, it depends on what you like, right? But for Lady Mikage, she does so much. And the thing about her, the thing that kept me going with Mikage this high on the list is she does so much everywhere, everywhere, you know, arena, you want an ally attacker, ally attack is so good. She has the best ally attack in the entire game. She's the only ally attacker that teams up with all allies, but also has an increased attack and increased crit damage. You know, most of them, like Cardio, for example, has an increased crit rate, increased crit damage. But she brings the increased attack, too. It's a little subtlety, but it's so good. And then this Silken Snare is the best of this class of ability in the game. Everything she does is the best, I feel like, right? It's an AoE attack, decreased duration of all enemy buffs and all ally debuffs, and increased duration of all enemy debuffs. In all ally buffs, you're doing everything you need in terms of buff and debuff manipulation on enemies and allies all in the same three turn cooldown. On the A1, a random ally from the Shadowkin faction will always join the attack. Try pairing her up with a Boro. I have a video on that. Check it out. About a, like a week ago, a Boro in uh, Hydra. She attacks. Lady Makage attacks. A Boro attacks with an a, a hard hitting AoE on the A1. Or even in the arena, try pairing her with a, uh, a Harima. A Harima's gonna join in on every A1 attack. Oof. And we're only talking about her, and we're not even done with her base form. At the start of the champion's turn, removes all debuffs from the ally with the highest attack. So now she's cleansing your nuker every time that she goes. Oof. Now, if you get locked out in the arena, or if you just wanna control anywhere else in the game, wave content, wherever, take a look at her alternate form. An AoE stun, decreased turn meter of all enemies by 30% on a three turn cooldown. Well, that's nasty. On her A1, you place a sleep on the target for one turn with a decreased target turn meter by 15%. On the A3, you have a increased accuracy on all allies and then remove buffs from all enemies with the big version of weaken. And then at the start of this champion's turn, she decreases the turn meter of the enemy with the highest attack by 15%. So now she's basically stymieing the, the determiner of the nuker on the other team, who you have to be concerned with the most. She does so much. She has accuracy in all battles by 80 as well. Oh, I love Lady Mikage. Hopefully you guys agree with me on that. Uh, number two is going to be my man, Newt. Oh, I was tempted to go with number one on Newt. I was. The thing about number two and number one is, is number one is, good, is God tier everywhere. And Newt is God tier in PvE. And that was the differentiator. The crazy thing about Newt, though, is he's the number two champion over all these mythicals we talked about, right? And he was a, a, a fusion. That's awesome. Same thing for Sun, with Sun Wukong. Was, was, he was free. Same thing for Armands, right? It's cool to have some fusions, more accessible champions, and not everybody just be 
hard to get mythicals on this list, you know? Although there was a lot of them. The new is just the best, man. He's just the best PvE champion in the entire game, in my opinion. This Dwarven Might is probably one of the strongest A1s in the game. It's a, a triple hitter with decreased target's turn meter on every hit, right? So amazing against like Dark Fey. Like you don't even need a lure anymore, right? He's got that turn meter control at 100% on each hit, a 15% chance. And then on Fire Knight Hard, he can place the freeze to do the same thing. Uh, he's got the AOE decrease attack and the big version of Weaken and a counterattack on himself. So he can go back into more control off the A1, which again is a triple hitter. So good. And then he has the strongest attack in the game against bosses, against high HP units. Blessed Bash is the only triple hitter enemy max HP ability in the game, and he's got it. <laughs> uh, just every time, excuse me, each hit decreases the target's defense by 3% as well. So we're, now we're reducing their defense while we're at it. No big deal. And we also have a heal on that ability. And then when counterattacking, deals 100% damage instead of 75%, which is great because he brings his own counterattack. Accuracy and Dunno's by 80. He is the real deal. I made a whole video talking about he is the most wanted dupe in the game. He's the most wanted trip in the game as well. He's amazing number one in the game guys is only took us 40 minutes to get here not bad for yours truly star sage galathir number one number one so now's the moment where you're like wait he didn't say my favorite champion where, where's where's that champion maybe mithrala sulfurian yeah there's a lot of snubs in there you know but i actually stand by i actually put a lot of time and thought into this list even though it's silly you know this exercise uh but i do think that star sage is the best champion in the game uh he can be utilized absolutely everywhere and he's he's really just he's just class top of the class in terms of where this game is right now be interesting to see what happens next year in 2025 who's number one he's got an aoe attack on both forms okay on his on his base form He's filling the term of all allies by 10%. On his alternate form, it's basically the opposite of this, decreasing the term of all enemies by 10%. You can get additional fill, uh, fill as well if they're under active buffs. Basically the inverse of this ability again on the alternate form. We have a cleanse, a heal, and then a term meter fill, and then a block debuffs. What a great ability here. A cleanse, heal, block debuffs, and turn meter fill based on his max HP as well. Scales pretty well at 22K. He's at 115 base speed as well. A revive with a 50% turn meter, 50% HP, and a perfect veil on a four turn cooldown, right? Uh, it's very comparable with Duchess's revive, right? Duchess has a veil and not a perfect veil, uh, but this guy has, and he, she gives more HP, but he has 50% turn meter on his, right? Look at this passive. Eternal Beyonder is so just. It's so difficult to deal with if you're going against him in any content, right? I'm waiting for the, the hard version of something. What do you think they're going to introduce? They're going to introduce some sort of difficulty to the game at some point soon here uh, that we're going against like all mythicals in the wave content, you know? Anyway, I digress, and I can't wait to go against Star Sage. I'm a tongue-in-cheek there. He receives 5% damage for each 100 resist on him. Stacks up to 25%. So everybody builds him with as much resist as they possibly can. Uh, we'll talk about why on the alternate form. I have a video on him that went live yesterday, by the way. I pulled him. So lucky from a remnant summon. Prevents his champion's death and keeps him alive with 1 HP when receiving a fatal hit. Then equalizes his HP. So he equalizes Brob to the average HP of the entire team. So it's not like... He's getting hit and placing an unkillable, and then you have to hope to heal him. He's getting hit and then healing to the average of the team. That makes it so you really can't just target him first because he's always just going to keep healing to full. It's really nasty. His other form, so his base form is all about reviving and, you know, supporting our team. His support form, or his, his alternate form, excuse me, is all about controlling the enemy, kind of like an Armanzi type vibe, you know? He has the AoE we already talked about, right? On the A2, he's removing all buffs before attacking, and he's placing a block active skills. Will not trigger counterattacks. Three turn cooldown. So basically, he's locking out mythicals with this ability. On the A3, and he's removing all buffs. Just gotta be careful of polymorph. It's the only thing stopping him here on the on the alternate form. On the Dark Nebula, 
Love the name of that ability. I love the name of all of his abilities. Very, very uh, universe uh, themed, you know, astronomy themed here. Uh, increased accuracy on all allies by, for two turns. And then a decreased resistance on all enemies. And then a stun on all enemies. So he's going to have increased resist accuracy and decreased resistance on the enemies. So you're definitely going to land the stun there, right? And increases his accuracy equal to 75% of his resistance when placing debuffs or activating instant effects. So now you can just build him with a ton of resistance and he's easily gonna land all of his debuffs and then he's gonna resist everything on the enemy team. If an enemy's accuracy is higher than the champion's resist, has a 50% chance of transferring CC debuffs back to the enemy when placing them on this champion, as if you didn't need a little bit more sugar on top or cherries on top of the sundae, sugar's on top of the what, huh? I don't know. Anyway, guys, resist in all battles. There you go. That's my top 25 champions in Ray Shadow Legends here in June, in the summer of 2024. Who do you agree with? Who do you disagree with? Let me know. Let me have it in the comments below, guys. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.